Hello, this is Mark Young with XLM Solutions, and today I'm going to talk about the 3D Experience Business Pro Process Management Solution, but specifically the Business Process Designer role within 3D Experience. This will be a continuation of the webinar where I went over the Business Process Player role. The 3D Experience Business Process Management solution is a configurable solution for creating processes in 3D experience. There are three main roles, business process designer, which will be the key role we'll talk about today in creating new processes in the system, business process player, which is the role that users use to execute the processes, and business process analyst to get statistics and KPIs on processes that have been executed in the platform. So today I'll go through a simple example of creating a brand new process that users can execute. And for those of you who want to see the previous webinar, it is recorded here or accessible here through this YouTube link and I can provide it later as well. So let's see how to best create processes within 3D Experience. So we're going to start off in 3D Experience and we will go to our compass and you will see we have various roles such as the business process designer which we'll be using, business process player, and business process analyst. So I will click on business process designer and click the role up. In this page I can see the different business process models that I have created and my credits used. So if I want to create a new business process model, I click on create business process model, give it a name, and create model. So now I can start modeling and the business process modeler is all based on the BPM 2.0 specification, which is an open specification. So to start modeling, I can click on my start node and simply from this toolbar, create additional nodes. So I'm going to create a node, which will be a user node. Give it a name. I can then from there create parallel nodes if I want to. So I need this um, object or node to create parallel nodes and from there I can create a node and go back and create another node and even create a third node and I can move these on around if I wanted to just for visual purposes and then once these nodes all finish I can close the node and build my connectors to it. I won't spend too much time making everything look very pr pretty or not, but you can do that. For these nodes, you can control what type of nodes are they. So is it parallel? Is it going to be an or, like only one route needs to be done? Or is there some conditions or events that will control how those nodes work? So for now, let's keep them as parallel nodes. So they'll run in parallel. So give them names, for example, engineering, manufacturing, and we'll call this quality. We can then add more nodes if we want. And nodes can be user nodes where a user has to operate, or they can be script nodes where an actual script will happen or get executed automatically or sub processes where you have nodes within nodes. So let's create another node here. We'll call this manager. We will add a new decision node here. And we need to change it. Inclusive. have a 
path here and a path here. And call this a shortcut. We'll call this long decision. And then we can add one more node here. And then close it up with an ending node. So there we created our simple process where we have a start node. It goes through three nodes in parallel, then through a, another series pull node, and then it makes a decision and then goes to the end. So right now we have saved or created our model. Next step, we'll add parameters to the model. So I'm going to click here to save it. Now we got to add users and other operations to the model. So I'm not going to do this for all the nodes, but I will do it for a couple of them to show an example. First thing we need, we need to assign the user. So we can assign it through users within 3D experience or groups or users. And for example, pick myself. You could also do dynamic assignments based on logic, allow reassignments, um, external assignments, etc. So we have assigned the user. We can also choose information to display. So if I want to choose information about this flow to display to the user, I can do that. For example, the process identifier, the first and last name of who's doing the work, um, et cetera. There's many uh, default um, variables to display. So I can hit OK. We can also create forms for the user to fill out information. So we can create fields, forms, and if we want free text, we can just type in the free text, such as, you know, description of change. So that's free text, but then we can create a variable for the free text and give it a name. as well. Um, and this can be a text field, a pull down field, dates, etc. Um, and then we have some configurable properties about that field as well. So we can add that too. So when this node happens, they're going to see some default information, but also have a form to fill out information as well. I'm going to jump ahead to this decision node here. And we can go here and again assign a user and again I will assign myself and then in this case we have a decision that needs to happen so one of the things I first I need to do here is have the user fill out some information to make that decision. So I am going to go to my form here and create a field called long or short and have this be a pull down field. and have two values so now I'm going to set my decision for this node and I can go and edit my conditions to, for the shortcut path or the long decision path so I hit edit decision I pick where my variable information is coming it's coming from my manager node and I'm going to say if equal, go the short route. And I will do the same thing here. I will say if the node from the manager node is equal, 
to long, go the long route. Um, you know, again, you know, we can fill in the fields, you know, based on user, who gets notified, what information to display, what users need to fill out, um, other automated tasks as well. Once we're done with everything, we can, you know, deploy this for production. We can run tests on it before we deploy it, um, continuing editing it, etc. So I'm going to go back to the model here. I also should say everything is being saved in real time, so there is no saving need to be done. And then we can see our model here that we can use to, again, test, uh, reconfigure it, duplicate it, etc., and then execute it. I'm going to end here on how to create a process model workflow using the process or business process designer role. Um, if you want to see how these workflows are executed with all this functionality, please look at this webinar where we go through actually running the workflow from a user point of view. Um, you can reach out to me for the link if need be. And with that, I will provide my contact information on the screen. Thank you for watching this video on business process management, specifically the business process designer role within 3D Experience. I really just hit the tip of the iceberg regarding the functionality that can be done through the business process management solutions. Uh, for more information on it, please reach out to me per the contact information on the screen. We will also be conducting in-depth webinars on this topic as well. And please look out for the webinars or, or do a Google search for them as we will have them available online as well. Once again, thank you very much.